Welcome to the escarpment. This is my model railway HO build channel and I'm your host Jason. Today's video, well, <laughs> I think the title says it all. Mistakes, oversights and OCD. I think we'll start with the, the major mistake. Those with a keen eye would have noticed that my last video, the actual control panel build, I've actually taken down that video. You can no longer view it on my channel. Now the reason was basically the, the series circuit that I applied or that approach didn't work. And really I should have known better because with anything with a series circuit, once you start putting in resistance, you start getting voltage drops. In that original circuit, I was using bipolar or bicolor, whatever you want to call it, LEDs, meaning there was actually two LEDs in the one, which were reversed, um, but wired within the one. So there was actually two LEDs in each single component. Looking at a basic configuration with just two, in actual fact, I had four LEDs. Now with any, anything in the circuit, everything has a resistance component to it, no matter what it is, even LEDs. Now having that many, and in some cases where I've got crossovers, I would have had six LEDs sort of wired up in that series circuit. So you can see it would have been a hell of a, a voltage drop. Majority of the point motors weren't working because there just wasn't enough voltage getting to them at the end of the circuit. So that sort of brought me to, okay, what can I do here? Can I boost the voltage on the other side of the circuit? Yeah, you can, but the circuitry that I had, it's only one way. It, only, you know, it doesn't have a reverse circuit to it. So, you know, it'll work one way, but as soon as I reversed it, to change the polarity, it wasn't working. So I chucked that idea out. So really the only thing left for me was really to go back to the basics and do the tried and true. Um, sometimes, you know, I like to push boundaries. Most of the time it does work, sometimes it doesn't. And unfortunately, these are one of those times where it didn't work. Back to the parallel. So I had to go back and redo six of my panels, or well, actually seven. I haven't got to the seventh one yet, but I can report I've actually done all the other six panels. And that was basically converting them back to a parallel type circuit behind the scenes. And meaning I ditched the bipolar or bicolor LEDs and just went with single greens. And uh, having them in parallel, obviously in parallel circuits, it's your, your amps or your milliamps that change your voltage stays constant. And in this case where the point motors need seven to nine volts, it's now getting that without any voltage drop because it's now in a, a parallel circuit. So that actually resolved that problem. And if I, up here you can see, this is the Underwood Colliery Junction. Basically it does this top third level loop up here. And you can probably hear in the background uh, if I do, and you can probably hear the points work. I've got level one, level two, level three. They're, all the points are fully wired, but not all the points are working. And I'll come back to that very shortly. In saying that, everything is all hooked up and let's just say it's working for now. Now you might say, what the hell does that mean, working from now? Well, you see, once I've wired it all up, did a whole bunch of testing, I found there was a few points that just weren't working. And uh, for whatever reason, they were just duds. There's probably, I think I've replaced one already and I've got, I've got to replace another three. So all up, and I can't remember how many point motors I do, but I, you know, I was in the 60s, 70s. So, you know, out of all that, I had four duds well so far i've still got to do testing on the um two branch lines but i won't be doing that until i get those control panels up and running but anyway back to that so i've got still one control panel up there on level three branch line that i need to convert to the parallel circuitry and then wire that up and then there'll be one left which is the owen locomotive depot control panel that was probably the major mistake that I'd done. You know, I could have called it an oversight, but really I just, I wasn't thinking. So it happens. 
I've done it before. If you remember my first Helix, got into that uh, auto mode and uh, really fucked that up. Never mind, live and learn. So what I'm gonna do now, I'll take you around with a few other bits and pieces and show you some oversights along the way. Let's start with the first oversight. Now, I don't know if this one's a, an obvious one, but if you have a look at these two control panels here, the Port Kembla South and the Port Kembla Station, if we take a closer look at these panels, you can see that each point motor and switch has a corresponding code. What I had in mind was those codes could be transferable up on the track and I could have signs up there, you know, whether or not it was a, a PKS1 or a PKS8, it would actually give what point it was and where it was positioned. If you have a quick look over to your right, you've got the Port Kembla station. So in actual fact, my codes for each of these panels start with PKS. And it wasn't until I got these two side by side, I finally rung a bell and I thought, oh, bugger, you know, they're both have PKS and of course you know each of them have the same numbering so it starts at one whereas the Port Kembla station only has three switches so it's, you know, it's one two three but I've got the same code on the Port Kembla south there one two three at least with the first three switches. This was one of those moments with OCD it's like oh you know do I go back get that Port Kembla station reprinted and maybe change it where it's got a, a PKS small t and then the number. Look, I, I've sat on it, sat on it, and I'm going to uh, challenge the OCD component and I'm gonna leave it as it is. The saving grace is it's only the first three switches and really the Port Kembla station are up here to the far left, uh, sorry, the far right on the camera. And then the one, two, three for the Port Kembla South is on the far left down at the other side. So that's probably the saving grace. So it's not like they're mixed together and you've got them side by side on the track work. So I think at this point in time, I'm gonna live with that. Yep, you heard right, I'm gonna live with that. Because really pulling that apart and redoing, I just, doesn't make any sense to me. So the second oversight, and I actually only come across this by accident. And I was only, you know, when looking at this track configuration and then I was looking at the control panel, I just thought, hang on a minute, there's something not quite right. And right now it matches. And for those that follow me on Facebook, you would have seen a post where I talked about I had to make some track tweaks. Well, this area here was one of them. You see, I had a set of points here, I had it in this position, and you can see against the control panel, it didn't match. So I had to pull out that set of points and move it back to where it is now, uh, just so it lined up and it was correctly placed as it is positioned on the control panel. So that was a bit of an oversight, but I, I must admit some time ago, I do remember when I was making a whole bunch of track tweaks way back and I knew I had to come back to this because I'd already had most of the control panels designed on the computer. And, you know, I did make a note to myself to come back and change it, but obviously I forgot or I'd misplaced that list. And uh, yeah, bit of an oversight. But anyway, it's been corrected. So another oversight, but really a, a minor one. For those that may have seen previous videos, you would have noticed that these two monitors were pretty much side by side. Well, the issue was on this side of each monitor, there's a, a USB insert where you can, you know, stick in a memory card and you can actually tape. And I thought, you know, while the controllers are down here with the dispatch and, you know, keeping an eye on things with the cameras, you can actually, each four of these cameras on each screen can actually record so I thought that was pretty neat and by having these two side by side, I couldn't get access to it. So what I've done is actually just repositioned these two slightly apart so I've got room to sort of get in to each of those. I've also put in a switch here where previously when the power went out, the whole thing went out and these dates and times reset themselves and it was really annoying the shit out of me. So what I'd done is put in a switch where I've got, you know, auxiliary power going to it full time. So 
so it can be turned off and it does not lose the date all the time. This is another oversight here and what I'll do I'll put up a picture of the Terry maintenance set a control panel and this was another item where I thought especially when I was going through and putting the, the same codes on each of the point motors so I knew what was wiring to what and I just couldn't work out this scene here and it sort of was bugging me because I couldn't make any sense out of it on the control panel and then I finally realized that this configuration was actually wrong this line here this set of points right here should be where this one is and this is where I'm, I've sort of started to align it up and what I've got to do is move this set of points over to here have this track be connected to this set of points obviously I've got to make this short connection here and then this one will go into this side of the points and then this one to this side and then that will make or allow at least the control panel and the track configuration to align properly but uh, anyway I've caught it now not a biggie I can actually change this without needing to uh, worry about the control panel so that was a another oversight so I think this is the last one where I've made a little boo-boo and not aligned both the control panel and track work just some other stuff behind the scenes you can see there I've got the wiring all hooked up and that's to all well six of the eight uh, control panels the whole main line now level one two and three are now fully controlled other than those point motors I need to replace I don't know if I'll do a, a, just a video dedicated to how I'm wiring up but I'll, I'll show you especially the uh, cable ties that I have the the ones that I buy have this extra bit to it where you can sort of put a screw through it and screw it your framework or wherever you want to screw it to and I use those I loop them leave them open feed the wire through get all the wires through and then I start at the other end start pulling them a little bit tight and then doing that the cable ties up works really well I honestly thought the the wiring from the control panels to the point motors was going to be the most time consuming so just another angle here this is the Port Kembla South and you can see the LEDs light up the path and uh, they work quite well well besides those point motors I need to replace let's head back to the chair that's been some of the mistakes and oversights etc etc and how I've sort of dealt with it uh, as I said there was one main one where I'm just going to deal with it especially with the two control panels that have got the same name uh, as I said I think I'm okay because there are opposite ends here of the layout so it should be all good but uh, there you go so even with the most stringent of planning yeah mishaps happen and um, it has tested me especially these control panels uh, you know there was a lot of time that I spent on the design and then obviously the expense of having them printed out the way I had and then when I had to go back and redo the circuitry in in the first phase of it uh, you would have seen I used hot glue so I had to be very very careful especially heating that hot glue back up so I could swap out the LEDs now on some of them I had overheated just a little bit and there's a few little spots around where it had happened but uh, not enough to cause me to have a heart attack I guess but uh, enough it annoyed me at the time but now looking at it you know you really got to look to notice it uh, I know where they are so I know it straight away but you know it, it's in the big scheme of things it's pretty good where to next so as I said I'll get onto the seventh control panel over there on the branch line I'll have to redo the circuitry in the back of it and then I'll get that in place get that wired up well actually before I get that wired up I have to do that bit of tweaking with the track up there on level three of the branch line because um, I've got to get that in place there's no point 
trying to wire up when the track work is in inconsistent or needs changing because obviously with that one the point motor has got to be moved and changed so uh, I'll get that one done and then I'll come back and see what I can edit out of the the build control panel video so at least hopefully and I have to, I'm not quite sure I need to go back and have a bit of a look at it again whether or not I can split out what I did with the frame and then put in new clips to sort of show you the new parallel circuitry that I did at the back. And then once I've got all the control panels in, I just need to make sure, test all the point motors that they're working up there. Then I'll be ready to potentially invite some people over to um, do some testing. It's been a long time in the making. Uh, I've got all the I guess compulsory infrastructure in place ready for some you know runnings testings that type of stuff but it'd be nice to get a few people over here target certain areas where they can really concentrate just make sure you know there's no room with derailments or issues with points um, and that type of stuff i do need to go in i've noticed on these tierlig brand that i buy with the points uh, the check rails some of them have movement in it, so I need to go and, and glue them in place. There's a few that do move and have caused me derailments in the past. Other than that, what I'll do, I'll just get on with the job. So with that said, until next time, happy railroading. Bye for now.